Now we are going to cover Chapter 7, The Nurses, Ideas, and Forces that Define the Profession. First, we will take a historical look at nursing profession. We have the Middle Ages. Most nursing care was performed by religious orders. During the Renaissance, the influence of religious orders declined. It was helped along by Protestant Reformation in Europe. Nursing continued to move fully into the general population. It was no longer primarily the province of religious orders. Later, nursing care became more secular and more structured, and formal training programs were begun. Then we had the Industrial Revolution. Women continued to push past societal boundaries to improve nursing education and patient care. In the early 1980s, the nature of healthcare began changing dramatically as cost reduction and quality improvement issues surfaced. Managed care emerged. We have also the religious, social, and political factors that have affected nursing's history. First, we're going to discuss religious. Religious factions developed groups to care for the sick. Most nurses were female, but many male religious orders also extended nursing services to those with socially unacceptable diseases in addition to other illnesses. Over the years, nursing has become more of a secularized profession, but more recently, many churches have instituted parish nursing services for their parishioners. Nursing is considered a calling. We have the Knights of St. Lazarus, Knights of the Hospitaliers of St. John of Jerusalem, Alexian Brothers, and the Parish Nursing. Social attitudes towards women have affected the development of nursing. Florence Nightingale's efforts during the Crimean War were a catalyst for the establishment of nursing schools in England. Nightingale supported nurse training and encouraged women of all social levels to enter the profession. Many American women took the torch from Nightingale and continued to push past societal boundaries to improve nursing education and patient care. So Florence Nightingale was highly educated with high social standing. During the Crimean War, she decreased death rate from 42% to 2%. She was known as the Lady with the Lamp. She established a nursing school and wrote a textbook. She changed nursing to become a respectable profession. She believed nursing was an art, one that required organized, practical, and scientific training. There we have the historical foundations of Florence Nightingale. Then we have Clara Barton. She was known as the Angel of the Battlefield during the American Civil War. She organized the American Red Cross. Then we have Lillian Wald. She established a visiting nursing service for poor families in New York City. We have Mary Breckenridge. She organized a frontier nurses organization in rural Kentucky that is still in operation today. We also have Linda Richards. She is known as America's first trained nurse. Then we have Isabel Hampton Robb. She reduced working hours of students and promoted licensure exams. Then we have Mary Adelaide Nutting. She wrote a book on the history of nursing. Then we have Lavinia Dock. She is a well-known nurse who fought for women's rights issues and for the life right to vote. Mildred Montag promoted creation of the associate degree as a shorter route into nursing. The major social factor that is affecting nursing is society's attitude towards the role of women. Okay, unfortunately, we've got to discuss the political part of it. From the Civil War to World War II, wartime contributions to nursing care have been significant and have prompted a higher level of patient care. Many important contributions to professional nursing have been made during times of conflict. Unfortunately, that's sad. Civil War. 
Dorothea Dix. She was the Boston school teacher who had been crusading to improve care of the mentally ill in institutions. She organized a training program for women volunteers to care for the wounded. Then we had the Spanish-American War. That was marked the first time that trained nurses were accepted into military hospitals. Then we have World War I. Both the Army and the Navy had nurse corps. Then we have World War II. Nurses were involved in all aspects of care, in military hospitals, on battleships, or flying on medical evacuation planes. The Korean conflict, the Vietnam War, Operation Desert Storm, and the War on Terror. Nurses continue to assist the sick and wounded. If you look at this timeline, it kind of gives you when all these occurrences happen with the nursing profession from throughout the times from 500 clear up to the year 2000. So let's look at practice question one for historical foundations. A nurse knows that Florence Nightingale is also known as the Angel of the Battlefield, first trained nurse in America, superintendent of the female army nurses, or lady with the lamp. This was an easy one. It's number four, lady with the lamp. Nightingale was observed many nights making rounds through the battlefield with the lighted lantern, earning her the nickname, the lady with the lamp. Now we're going to review nursing today and factors that influence practice. There are several factors that influence nursing today as health care has returned to the home and Americans are living longer. First, let's look at the aging population. Geriatric and home health care will continue to increase as a large percentage of the U.S. population become older adults and use even more health care dollars for chronic illnesses. It's known as the grain of America. We need knowledge for geriatrics and home care. Then we have the emphasis on health maintenance and disease prevention. Nurses deal not only with illness and injury, but also with health maintenance and disease prevention, thus reducing health care costs and improving patient quality of life. Nurses counsel or teach patients about health screening, dietary needs, exercise programs, treatment regimens, and self-care. Outcomes-Oriented Patient-Centered Care Successful patient outcomes with minimal complications should be the goal of nursing care. Nurses work with population groups as well as individual patients to develop health-related goals. Nurses play an important role in helping achieve positive experiences for patients with minimal complications. And then, of course, let's don't forget cost containment. Many times, consumer options are limited by the ability to pay, thus making it a challenge to provide and maintain quality nursing care. Look at managed care. That's an insurance-based approach to reducing costs. It's based upon diagnosis-related groups, also known as DRGs. DRGs establish pre-treatment diagnosis billing categories. Then we have the preferred provider organizations, PPOs. The patient receives a discounted rate for services when using specified physicians or agencies. We have the health maintenance organizations, also known as HMOs. This group of healthcare agency has a prepaid fee. Then we have the Medicare, which is national and state health insurance program for older adults. Prospective payment systems limits the amount paid to hospitals that are reimbursed by Medicare and they use the DRGs. Medicaid is a federal public assistance program to assist those with financial needs. Quality improvement. Even with restrictions on cost and treatment options, quality care is expected in all areas of nursing. The Joint Commission established a set of core measures on which hospitals must report, and the Hospital Quality Initiative includes 20 measures as evidence of best practice. Health care providers are held accountable to the public for quality care. So quality care, we have the continuous quality improvement. It's a process in which the quality of patient care is continuously monitored for effectiveness. There are a set of standards that produce excellence. Then we have the clinical care pathways or care paths. They monitor quality of care. 
Nurses are employed as outcome managers, case managers, and quality improvement managers. The Joint Commission established a set of core measures for certain disease processes. The Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services created hospital quality and initiatives. There are 20 measures or indicators as evidence of best practice. And then, of course, we have the LeapFrog group that collects and reports patient safety and quality data to the public and the payers. Now let's talk about Patient Protection and Affordable Care Act. This increases grants for master's and doctoral studies. It aims to increase nursing knowledge and quality standards, assessment, and improvement. It has expanded the National Health Service Corps. The APRNs who agree to work in underdeserved areas receive loan repayments. It has created a grant program that can be funded up to $1.5 billion for maternal and child programs for at-risk populations. More grant funding for the nurse-managed health care centers are increasing access to care. Let's talk about the ANA's Nursing Social Policy Statement. This is a provision of a caring relationship that facilitates health and healing. There is attention to the range of human experiences and responses to health and illness within the physical and social environments. There is integration of assessment data with knowledge gained from an appreciation of the patient or the group. There's application of scientific knowledge to the processes of diagnosis and treatment through the use of judgment and critical thinking. There's advancement of professional nursing knowledge through scholarly inquiry. There's influence on social and public policy to promote social justice. There's assurance of safe, quality, and evidence-based practice. Okay, so let's look at practice number two question. A nurse is discussing DRGs, PPOs, and HMOs. Which concept is the nurse describing? Is it core indicators, cost containment, hospital quality initiative, or nursing social policy statement? I don't think this question is quite as easy as the first one. Have you decided yet? It is number two, cost containment. All these terms are aspects of managed care, which is cost containment, such as terms such as diagnosis related to groups, DRGs, preferred provider organization, PPOs, and health maintenance organizations, HMOs, have become commonplace. This concludes this lesson. I thought I would add a few articles. These are two historical ads for nurses. And then the other one is a list of rules for nurses duties in 1887.